Today we're going to discuss special scenarios that you might encounter when solving a system of three. The example I've provided for you comes from your book, but it's helpful to go through the steps together. So if you look, equation one says x plus y minus z equals negative one, and equation two says 4x plus 4y minus 4z equals negative two. I am going to just go ahead and eliminate the x's because that is what the majority of you do. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 4. When I do so, my second equation doesn't change, so I'm just going to write it 4x plus 4y minus 4z equals negative 2. My top equation, though, is going to change to negative 4x minus 4y plus 4z equals 4. Four x's minus four x's is no x's. Four y's minus four y's is no y's. Negative four z plus four z is zero. Negative two plus four is positive two. Now if you look, we all know that zero is never equal to two. Therefore, for this system of three, there is no real solution. You don't have to take it any further. You may be asking yourself what type of problem that has three variables may not have a solution. Well, imagine three planes that never intersect. They kind of stacked on top of each other, but they're never quite touching at any given point. That's probably by far the easiest one. The other scenario we're going to talk about is a little bit different. So here is example two. It looks a lot like example one. I'm going to start the process just like before. I look at my first two equations. I notice I have a y and a minus y, so I'm going to get rid of the y's this time. So I'm going to take equations one and two and eliminate the y's. When I combine x plus y plus z equals 8 with x minus y plus z equals 8, I'm left with 2x plus 2z equals 16. So now maybe I'll put equation 2 with equation 3. Okay, in order to do that, I look and I'm like, oh, I can go ahead and combine them, no biggie. If I do x minus y plus z, equals 8 with 2x plus y plus 2z equals 16. Well, I get 3x plus 3z equals 24. Okay, not too bad. I'm going to try to eliminate something. Maybe I'll get rid of the x's. In order to do that, it looks like that I'm going to have to multiply this equation by negative 3, okay, that becomes negative 6x minus 6z equals negative 48. I'll do the same process to this equation up here, multiplying by a negative 2. Wait, I don't need a negative 2. We'll make it a positive 2 because I already have a negative. I get 6x plus 6z equals 48. Well, when I solve this math problem, I get 0 equals 0, which is always true. So this is in the case where we have no solution. This is the case where we have what's called an infinite solution. So what we have to do is try to write a relationship between the three variables. Now, it's kind of tricky, but we're going to go ahead and do it. What you do is you take one of your equations with two variables. I'm going to take 2x plus 2z equals 16. I'm going to write them so that they're in terms of x's. So what that means is that I want my final answer to have all x's in it. To do that, 
I am going to have to solve for x. So if I take my equation 2x plus 2z equals 16 and use it as a literal equation, I can get x by itself. I can do the same also and get z by itself as well. So I'm going to say, we'll just do x. So we get 2x equals, I'm going to subtract over the 2z to the other side. So it's negative 2z plus 16. And then I'm going to divide everything by 2. So we've got negative z plus 8. What that tells me is that so far, where I would normally have x is going to be equal to negative z plus 8. z is, of course, just going to be z. It's no biggie. It's just its own value. Now, Mrs. Dora, what if I wanted them to have x's in them and not z's? Well, the difference would have been you would have solved for the z so that it had all x's in them. Okay, now that I have two of the variables, I go back up to one of my original equations. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going to scroll up here and look. I have x plus y plus z equals 8. So x, sorry there, x plus y plus z equals 8. For cx, I'm going to put in what it equals, so negative z plus 8. Where I see y, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to put in y. Where I see z, I just leave it as a z. And where I see 8, I leave it as an 8. I combine like terms on the left. My negative z plus z will eliminate. I get 8 plus y equals 8. If I subtract 8 from both sides, I get y equals 0. So in my ordered pair, y is going to be 0. That is the relationship in terms of z. I originally said we were going to do in terms of x, but sometimes that happens. Now, Mrs. Dorn, what if I wanted, wanted to do the same thing, but I wanted instead of it having z's in it, I want to have x's in it? Okay, all you do is you take that exact same equation. Let's drink up some of this stuff. Kind of move that to the side. Say we take this equation that we used above. This time, instead of getting x by itself, we're going to get z by itself. So it becomes 2z equals negative 2x plus 16. Divide both sides by 2, I get z equals negative x plus 8, which makes sense because that is how they're related. Then all I would do is I would write my equation just like I plan on it. x, z is negative x plus 8. And if you plugged it back in, believe it or not, of course, y would be 0. Hopefully this is helpful to you so that you can write answers if it is an infinite scenario. The last example I want to go over is a real-life application. It says an amphitheater charges $75 for each seat in Section A, $55 for each in Section B, and $35 for each in lawn seats. There are three times as many seats in B as there are in A. The revenue from selling all 23,000 seats is $870,000. How many seats in, are in each section of the amphitheater? Okay, so in this problem, instead of having X, Y, and Z, maybe I'll use A, B, and C. A is section A, B is section B, and C will be the lawn seats. So the first, uh, and the first statement says there are three times as many seats in B as there are in A. So if I know how many are in A, and I take that times three, that should give me B. 
there are three times as many seats in B as there are in A. The revenue from selling all three seats is 870000 So I need to make a profit equation. I know that A sells for $55, so we're going to say 55 times A. That would tell me how much I made in the seats that were A. Excuse me, that's not 55, that's 75. So 75 or A plus 55 or B. And C seats cost, which are the lawn seats, cost $30 a piece. Equals $870,000. Now we also know that total, there are 23,000 seats. That means if I combine all the seats in A, all the seats in B with all the seats in C, they have to add to be 23,000 seats. Okay, so now I have all my equations. Pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stop the system. Now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I have some room to write. I'm going to shrink it up a little. Okay, so if we look at this, we could try to get rid of something, but I already know something. I know that B is equal to 3A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both equations, and where I see B, I'm just going to replace with 3A. So I, my first equation, 75A plus, okay, 55 times, well, B is 3A, so that becomes 3A, plus 30C equals 870,000. Okay, do the same with the other one. Where I see B, I'm going to substitute in. 3a. So a plus 3a plus c equals 23,000. Now what that does for me is it eliminates a variable altogether because I can now rewrite my equations so that they make more sense. If I take 55 times 3, I believe you get 165, which you do. So what we're going to do is we're going to write our new equation. So 75A plus 165A plus 30C equals 870,000. Now what I can do is I can add those A's together. So 165 plus 75, we're combining like terms. We have 240A plus 30C equals 870,000. I'm going to repeat the process using my equation over here. That just has A plus 3A. A plus 3A is 4A plus C equals 23,000. So there are my two new equations. Now, I can get rid of the A's or I can get rid of the C's. To get rid of the A's, I would have to multiply by 60 on my bottom equation. To get rid of the C's, I would only have to multiply by 30. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to multiply the bottom equation times a negative 30. So my first equation doesn't change. 240A plus 30C equals 870,000. I'm going to multiply my second equation by negative 30. So I get negative 120A minus 30C equals 23,000 times 30. Make it negative. That's 690,000. Okay, so now I simplify. 240A minus 120A is just 120As equals 870. 
370,000 minus 690,000 is 180,000. And then I just take 180,000 and I divide it by 120. That means A has to be 1,500. So in seat section A, there are 1,500 seats. Now all I do is take my equation back here, and I know relationship. I know that 3 times A equals B. So if A is 1,500, if I take 3 times 1,500, that'll tell me what B equals. 3 times 1,500 equals 4,500 seats. So there's B. Well, that's kind of nice. I know A is 1,500. I know B is 4,500. So all I have left to do is figure out what C is. Now, their total, A plus B plus C, has to add to B, 23,000. So I'm going to put in what I know. So 1,500 plus 4,500 plus C has to be 23,000. Okay, 1,500 plus 4,500 is 6,000 plus C equals 23,000. And then if I solve for C, I take 23,000 minus 6,000, resulting in C having exactly 17,000 seats. So if I write it as a relationship, it'd be 1,500 comma 4,500 comma 17,000. Hopefully that was helpful in figuring out how to solve a system of three when you have a real-life application.